Morning, ladies and gentlemen. How's everybody doing today? Oh, wonderful. It's a be what a beautiful day. Can you imagine it's this hot in February? Isn't that amazing? Uh, thank you for most of you received a gospel track from me. I, my name is Bill Rents with IPOC Ministries. I'm here to uh, share a brief message and then I'll stand by for a little while. If anybody has any questions or prayer requests or if anybody uh, wants to talk, I'll be here for that as well. Uh, obviously, I'm not associated with the Social Security Administration, uh, but I do believe in bringing the church to the state. And that's what I'm doing this morning. I'm going to preach a brief passage out of the scriptures here. Uh, I've entitled this message that the Lord sees and He saves. He sees and He saves some from their sins. It was November 14th, 1991, that the Lord would save a wretch like me, an ordinary sinner saved by an extraordinary Savior. Glory, hallelujah. How are you doing, ma'am? You have to take one of those. I'm just kidding. You have a beautiful day. God bless you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So the word says right here in Psalm 33, Behold the eye, behold the eye of the Lord is on those who fear Him, on those who hope in His mercy to deliver their soul from death, to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. Help is our help, excuse me, He is our help and our shield, for our heart shall rejoice in Him, because we have trusted in His name, in His holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, just as we hope in you. A brief overview of that short little powerful passage. The Lord says that the eye of the Lord is on those who fear Him. The eye of the Lord, He sees and saves those who fear Him. He sees and saves those whom the Father chooses to be His elect. He sees and saves those whom the Father draws to His Son Jesus Christ for the redemption of their sins. He sees and saves those whom the Holy Spirit regenerates their heart and turns a heart of stone into a heart of flesh, also known as the new birth. Because Jesus said, I tell you, unless you are born again, born twice of the water and the Holy Spirit, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. We must be born twice of the last Adam, who is Jesus Christ, because every one of us have been born once by the first Adam, the, the sins of Adam in the Garden of Eden. Because of his sins, I've lied, I've stolen, I've had lust, I've committed murder by having hatred in my heart. Whatever it's contention, jealousy, strife, uh, whatever it's drunkenness, drugs, stealing, no matter what our sins are, all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For there is no one righteous, no, not even one. Thus says the Lord. And the scripture says that the wages of our sin will be death. But the free gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory. That's good news, folks. The bad news is we've all sinned, we're all sinners, and we need a Savior. But the good news, my friends, is we can be saved from our sins through the Lord Jesus Christ. It says right here that He has mercy on some. His mercy triumphs over judgment. My dear friends, if you do not experience the mercy of the Lord, you will experience His judgment. The Bible says that when we die, we will either go to hell, heaven, and be with the Lord forever by being born twice, or we will go to hell. Because we are all born into sin and born into condemnation. My friends, hell's a hot place and it's forever, but hell's a beautiful place. Or excuse me, heaven's a wonderful, beautiful place. And it is my hope that you would be saved from your sins. Perhaps some of you in this line are born again. I would encourage you to remain steadfast in your faith and endure all the way to the end, my friends. See, the Bible makes it very clear that because we've broken God's law, we transgressed against His law, that the consequences is going to be death, damnation, and hellfire. But here's the grace. Here's the gospel that God sent a remedy for our sin problem, and that it is God, the Father, came to us in the, in the form of a man, Jesus Christ, the God-man, conceived of the Holy Spirit, born, born of the Virgin, 
And then Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, 33 years later, went to that cross and became the sin sacrifice as he atoned for the sins of his church. Who's his church? Those that would repent and believe. The blood-bought, repented, born-again followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Christ was buried. And then he rose again on the third day, my friends. Forever conquering sin and defeating death. Jesus Christ forever conquered sin and defeated death for those that would repent and believe so that you too can rise from your grave when you die rather than descend into hell. And then after He was buried, of course, He rose again, as I said, and then, he, and then He ascended into heaven where Jesus Christ is now seated at the right hand of the Father where He will intercede on your behalf if you become saved. As it says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins to the Lord Jesus Christ, He is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. See, we can become righteous by being clothed with His imputed righteousness. That's the only way we can enter heaven is through the blood of the Lamb that was slain for the foundations of this world. Amen. My friends, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Jesus Christ commands all men everywhere to repent from their sins because there is no salvation without repentance. Repentance is not a works that saves us. But repentance comes because of salvation. When we become saved, the Lord quickens the heart, changes the heart, grants us repentance, and changes us. He gives us new desires. We now hate the things that God hates, our sin, and we love the things that God loves. My friends, respond to that gospel call. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus to be saved from your sins. I pray you will do that. I do have a video camera going, I want to forewarn you, but if anybody has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. If you want me to turn the camera off for private conversations, I will do that as well. All right. Looks like there's some people on the end that haven't gotten a track. Man, it's hot, isn't it? Already? Yeah. 826 and it's already warm. I don't know, it looks pretty good there, buddy, or whatever it is. How you doing, miss? Hey. God bless you. How you doing there? Thank you. There you go. There you go. Well, hi, ladies. How you doing there? Good morning. How you doing? One for each of you. Thank right. you. We appreciate it. Amen.